The death toll from a landslide in a remote area of southern Ethiopia has risen to at least 146. A local official said today, warning that the number could rise. Images shared on Facebook by the local authority on Monday showed large crowds of people near a devastating scene of tumbled red soil using their bare hands to dig through the dirt in search of survivors with no sign of official rescue services, according to the French news agency AFP. Officials reported yesterday that 50 people had died after heavy rain overnight caused a landslide. Then... A second landslide buried people who had gathered to help. Women, children and local police were reported to be among the dead. New research from climate scientists say annual temperature increases in southern Africa are higher than elsewhere in the world. They say these increases are causing deadly storms and high temperatures in the middle of winter. Darren Taylor reports. Seven years ago, a model from the Southern Africa Science Service Center for Climate Change predicted a future of weather chaos for the region as temperatures rise. Only a few authorities paid much attention, says the organization's director, Dr. Jane Owatch. Scientists like Allwatch have shown that burning fossil fuels generates greenhouse gas emissions which act like a blanket around the earth, trapping the sun's heat and raising temperatures. Last year, the World Meteorological Organization said average global temperatures were nearly 1.5 degrees Celsius higher than in pre-industrial times. Allwatch's latest revised model says Southern Africa already one of the region's worst affected by climate change, will see temperatures rise faster than in much of the world. Higher temperatures have caused human suffering, weather changes, droughts and stronger, deadly tropical cyclones. It's clearly predicted that as we go into the future, first of all, we know it's getting warmer, but also it's getting drier. And of course, you have also experienced droughts and water shortages and reduction in food yields. These drastic, unexpected events are the common occurrence. So, of course, there are other issues that are responsible for those, including land use and land cover change. But climate change has got a good percentage in the contribution to these extreme events. She says countries experiencing what she calls serious weather upheaval include Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, Zambia and Zimbabwe. University of KwaZulu-Natal climate change expert Professor Tafadzwa Mbahudi says annual temperatures in southern Africa are rising by almost 3 degrees Celsius, also with tragic consequences. A warmer climate stores more moisture. A warmer climate also means more energy to drive storms or storm systems. A warmer climate also means higher temperatures and heat waves. And it also means that fires can start and spread more easily. South Africa is being hit hard now by weather extremes, with scores of people killed this year. Wildfires are sweeping parts of the country, blamed by scientists on record high winter temperatures that left vast grasslands dry. At the same time, the Cape coastal areas are being lashed by rainstorms, causing floods that have left thousands of people homeless. The unusual thing this time around is they had them in succession, one after the other. So if you have heavy rainfall, it saturates the soil, and any further heavy rainfall after that would mean now you are having localized flooding because you've exceeded your drainage. Mbahudi says no country in southern Africa is prepared for the weather expected to hit the region in the future. Every time we have this inclement weather, it is associated with death, destruction, which means we need to bring in significant international climate finance, you know, infrastructure being made climate resilient, because in many systems we require infrastructure overhauls to redesign our infrastructure, to repurpose our infrastructure. We need significant investments in rehabilitating the natural environment so that it can play its role in protecting the coastline.
training people and government officials in disaster management so that they're able to take proactive action to reduce the impact of these disasters. But so Kenya's anti-government protesters on Tuesday defied President William Ruto's warning of dire consequences and staged street demos in various parts of the country to demand his resignation. By noon, protests had been recorded in various parts of Mombasa, Kisumu, Nairobi, and Kajiado counties. But unlike previous demos, pro-government groups emerged to counter the anti-Ruto campaigners in the capital Nairobi, staging motorcycle riders in support of the besieged Kenya Kwanzaa regime. The Amo Farce group, mainly composed of border border riders, crisscrossed the central business district, honking, whistling, and chanting in support of the president. The pro ruto protesters who were granted a free pass at all police roadblocks carried placards in support of the government, including, let us give our president time. The riders who were accompanied by several numbers of Nairobi City County Assembly allied to Dr. Ruto's United Democratic Movement, UDA party, including Mark Mogambi, and Brian Etenia appeared well organized and funded. The first forward at a designated petrol station in the city before assembling at Uhuru Park, one of the heavily guarded venues in the capital, for instructions on the assignment they were about to embark on. Large group of border borders are fueling at Ruby's next to the entrance of the Haley Sel Selassie Expressway. They have been told to line up. Someone is footing their bill. The heavily armed police later cleared the way when the demonstrators started street rides about the city center. At one point, the pro ruto group clashed with other border border riders near Hilton Hotel after the latter accused the former of looting. A motorcycle was burned outside in Naivas supermarket on Kenyatta Avenue as two groups fought over the right to demonstrate. Police fired tear gas to contain the clash. A similar group dubbed Amani Kenya countered anti-government protests in Imana Daima by helping police clear the roads that had been barricaded by demonstrators. In Mombasa, police clashed with the protesters who marched in the street of the coastal city to push for the dissolution of government, accusing Dr. Ruto of failing to deliver on the promises he made while seeking office in 2022.